The profound significance of semen remains a mystery to all but the adept yogi. Esteemed yogic texts proclaim, as long as there is death, there is birth. As long as there is birth, there is death. Birth is an inevitable facet beyond human control. However, the prospect of limiting death exists. Ancient yogic wisdom has substantiated that the cause of death lies in the descent of semen, while the wellspring of immortality lies in its sublimation or ascent. If death is like one end of the story, then eternity should be the other. If there's a reason for death, it means we might be able to get rid of that reason. Like how a mechanic can fix a broken machine, a skilled yogi can rejuvenate a body that stops working due to imperfections. An ancient text proclaims, Disease, old age, and death cannot invade the body of a yogi whose form is purified by the fire of yoga. Attaining samadhi bestows upon the yogi a divine body, purified by the flames of yogic practice, an external symbol of true yogic attainment. Samadhi is the highest state of mental concentration that people can achieve while still bound to the body and which unites them with the highest reality. Celibacy is defined as abandoning the pleasures derived from the sexual organs through restraint. The restraint itself signifies nishkam karma yoga, an action devoid of expectations of fruits, and is known as brahmavidya, the knowledge of the Supreme Spirit. By practicing it, the yogi ascends to Urdhvarita status. This knowledge, ancient and esoteric, serves as the wellspring of all wisdom. Once acquired, nothing remains unknown. Numerous seekers, recognizing the significance of celibacy, strive to embody it, yet many falter in maintaining the discipline essential for realizing Brahmavidya, the truth of the Supreme Spirit. Hence, scriptures affirm, Celibacy stands as the highest penance. While other penances exist, they pale in comparison. The Urdhvareta saint, having undertaken penance in restraining the sexual organ, transcends being merely human and becomes godlike. The concept of celibacy in a brahmachari. Within our bodies reside two distinct types of glands, the endocrine and the exocrine. The endocrine glands, without ducts, release secretions absorbed by the lymphatic and venous systems, thereby distributing these substances throughout the entire body. Conversely, the exocrine glands, equipped with ducts, disseminate their secretions to specific body parts. During childhood, the testes in boys and ovaries in girls secrete these fluids, absorbed into the bloodstream. As youth arrives, the awakening of sexual energy in young men and women agitates them, culminating in release. Once this release occurs, the path of descent remains open indefinitely. Restraining and transmuting this energy proves to be as arduous as redirecting a river back to its source high in the mountains. To embrace celibacy is one matter, while achieving Urdhvareta status is another entirely. The celibacy observed by a celibate student, a retired householder practicing sadhana, and an ascetic represents ordinary celibacy. Yet, the celibacy of a yogi stands as extraordinary. Those adhering to ordinary celibacy seek solace in conventional, deliberate yoga involving yama and niyama principles. In contrast, the yogi practicing extraordinary celibacy finds refuge in sahaja yoga, the spontaneous form, also incorporating yama and niyama principles. Now let's explore some very important rules and techniques for practicing celibacy. One should not have lustful thoughts about the opposite sex, nor should one enter into discussions about him or her, because these discussions agitate the mind. One should not amuse oneself with him or her. One should not talk with him or her in solitude. One should not want to use him or her for sexual purposes or possess him or her in a sexual way. One should not engage in sexual intercourse. Techniques for the Conservation of Seminal Energy when the sex center is stimulated, the production of semen takes place. If there is a thought of sexual desire in the mind, be alert. Concentrate your mind on the genitals and contract the genitals inwards towards the belly, just as the piston is pulled outwards to fill the pump with water. This is called yoni mudra. 
then shut your eyes. Meditate. Now I am looking upwards from lower sex organs to the thousand-petaled lotus, Sahasrar Chakra, in brain within my body. The seminal energy flows to whatever point or organ the mind is focused on. If you focus the mind on the Sahasrar Chakra, the bioelectric energy, which would have otherwise been wasted in ejaculation through the activated Muladhar Chakra, will be sublimated upwards to the Sahasrar Chakra and transmuted into Ojas. But mind well, if your mind is still covetous of sex pleasure, you will not succeed in preserving seminal energy. But if you practice for a few days with determination and strong will, you will get abundantly its rewards. You will directly experience that even though sexual desires come with a force of storm, with this technique applied, they subside within a few seconds. Another technique. Whenever any strong sexual desire arises, exhale all the air from lungs completely and retain the breath out. Then contract your belly and take your navel back towards the spinal cord. By repeating this two, three times, the passion is pacified and you will be saved from seminal discharge. This technique is very simple, but it is a very important yogic maneuver. Air in the lungs is called apanavayu. With the strengthening of apanavayu, the sexual organ awakens and the mind becomes troubled. By forceful expiration of air, apanavayu is weakened. So it cannot activate the sex center. Moreover, by contracting the belly and navel backwards, the remaining energy in the sex center goes towards the navel. So there is no more energy left to activate the sex center, and thus ejaculation is prevented. This technique could be practiced in any place. This technique should be practiced regularly even when there is no sexual stimulation. It gives excellent benefits. I'd like to share with you another yoga technique. If for any reason there is a thought of sexual desire, the eyes should be fixed between the eyebrows. This will pacify this undesired awakening. In this situation, one should seek refuge in prana in order to restrain the momentum of apana. This refuge in prana may be attained by fixing the eyes between the eyebrows. On attaining this refuge, the apana is weakened and the awakening of the sexual organ is subdued. Frequent concentration of the eyes between the eyebrows alters the momentum of the vayu, and due to this change in momentum, the direction of the mind is also altered. Just as one may stop the turning of the wheel of a machine by pressing a switch, so the activated sexual urge of the body machine may be restrained by fixing the eyes between the eyebrows frequently. This urge will invariably be restrained by this yogic technique. If there is a thought of sexual desire in the mind, it can be pacified simply by drinking a glass of cold water and engaging the mind in good thoughts. If there is a thought of sexual desire in the mind, at that time the sex drive can be restrained by fixing the mind on the idea of a mother, sister, daughter. By abandoning solitude too, sexual desire may be subdued. If there is a thought of sexual desire in the mind, at that time a fine stream of cold water should be poured on the sexual organ. This will interfere with the sexual thoughts in the mind and replace them with new thoughts. Thus, the sexual desire will be weakened and destroyed. A bath of cold water will also quiet the sexual desire. By standing in waist-deep water or sitting in a tub filled with cold water, one may destroy sexual desire. By performing 15 to 20 pranayamas, one may also pacify sexual desire. In pranayama, the energy of the body is increased, thus the mind is strengthened and is not dominated by sexual desire. These methods, whether through yogic techniques or everyday practices, are aimed at redirecting thoughts and energies, ultimately aiming to subdue and transcend the powerful force of sexual desire in the pursuit of celibacy and spiritual elevation.